we have all the members. I'll call this meeting of uh, the Committee of the Whole to order at 7.38. Um, there, uh, would the city clerk call the roll? Nine present. All right, thank you. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. All right. Is there anyone wishing to speak for public forum tonight? Seeing none, um, we'll move into the minutes from our last meeting. Is there any motion to approve the minutes from our April 8th meeting? There's been a motion and second to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. With that, those minutes are approved. All right, items for discussion only. We'll move into item 3.1, the 2020 Executive Program Budget from an update from the City Administrator. Daryl. There we go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first order of business, I'd like to discuss uh, one of the handouts that was provided to you earlier this evening. Uh, we've tried to simplify it as far as drawing your attention to the changes uh, since the original public notice uh, was published uh, in the Sheboygan Press. Uh, as Alder uh, Donahue uh, alluded to earlier as part of the earlier held uh, Common Council meeting, the city did, re did receive news uh, last month, uh, we're in October, last month, uh, that due to the Edgewater generating um, plant uh, as part of Alliant Energies on the city south side uh, with half of that generation as far as megawatts uh, decreasing the state as a result adjusted by over half a million dollars in annual shared revenue contribution to the city uh, as a result of that uh, so as a result um, the intergovernmental revenue number did drop uh, and that was again part of what action that's part of the action uh, that you took earlier as a common council as a result of a presentation made earlier to the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee at their regularly scheduled uh, meeting in September. Um, also, there was a debt service payment that was omitted as part of a 2019 debt uh, instrument. Uh, and that, again, was discussed at the previous uh, Finance and Personnel Committee. Um, on the document before you, we did receive a bit of good news. Uh, last week, we received news that our general transportation aids uh, did increase by roughly $241,000. Also, a video service provider aid, which is a new program uh, as part of the biennium budget as a city, as a city is forced to uh, cut, uh, forced to reduce or cut by approximately 20% uh, per year of the annual franchise fee funds. Uh, from our cable providers. Um, as it was mentioned earlier tonight, uh, this money is not directly received from the from Spectrum or the other cable providers, uh, but this is money we receive from the state. Uh, over a, t uh, a five year period of time, this potentially could go away. Um, so that's something for you to consider as you entertain other uh, potential uh, expenditures associated with, with cable TV. Uh, funding. Again, this funding is, even though it's tacked on to a uh, subscriber of cable TV, uh, this fee uh, is an indication or representative of the city leasing its right of way for the cables to be placed within our community. So this is really a revenue associated with leasing our right of way, which is borne by the subscribers of this different cable service. It's not specifically earmarked for cable uh, services uh, or equipment, it's really a recognition that someone is using our right of way and they should pay a cost associated with that. Um, as a result of roughly $300,000 of additional funds, that, again, we received notice this past week. Uh, these yellow highlighted uh, pages that are before you reflect that the city is going to place this back in the general fund budget. Uh, this will reduce by roughly $300,000 our use of applied fund balance. It was over, it was roughly $2.2 million on this first page. If you go to the bottom, 
uh, where now it's reflective of $1,889,880. So again, that compares to 2.186319 that was uh, before you earlier for consideration. Um, one thing to note is, uh, what is, I guess the question is, what is an appropriate amount as far as applied fund balance? A rule of thumb that I've used over my career is no more than 5% of your uh, fund balance should be considered for annual funding as an annual funding source. Uh, this puts it uh, under the 5%. Uh, with that $1.889,880, uh, compared to the 2.2 million, it leaves the city with an expected or estimated fund balance at the end of 2020 at 42%. Um, as compared to if the full 2.2 million, it would be 41%. As a city, you have established a policy, an internal policy, that the city should maintain a minimum of 25% of fund balance in the general fund so clearly 41, 42% substantially exceeds that. So I think the city is, is in, in good standing. Um, those are really the, the changes uh, that are before you for consideration at your first common council meeting in the month of November. Um, it, I think all of you have a copy of the executive budget and brief document. If I can turn your attention to page 14, uh, this is a, sort of a quick summary of the overall budget and I think helps you uh, understand the, the big picture. On page 14 in the requested 2020 column, you'll see midway through the document uh, total expenses. So $109,704,000 is the requested expenditures uh, in 2020. This compares to the 2019 approved budget of $135 million, so what is before you for consideration, ultimately approval, is approximately a $25 million reduction in overall expenditures. A uh, couple lines down from that, or one line down from that, is total tax levy. Uh, and also on the screen for those in the audience, uh, in order to fund all our operations, uh, the amount of tax levy being requested for your consideration is an additional $322,387. This represents only a 1.36% increase in the overall levy from last year to this year. Uh, as you know, the city has a levy limit. Uh, so for operational purposes, uh, all but 120,000 uh, is being allocated for operational purposes, and that is a cap uh, so we, the city remains in compliance with that uh, levy limit. Uh, of the $323,000, approximately $120,000 will be applied toward uh, debt service costs uh, as, as identified for 2020. Uh, even though at this point in time we do not have a formalized or fixed equalized to assessment ratio, so I, I can only estimate at this time what the impact is going to be on the average taxpayer in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, uh, last year at this time, the average residential value uh, was approximately $106,000. So if you look at the associated tax rate, again, this is estimated, in order to raise an additional $323,000 uh, on an assessed tax rate, it would uh, mean an additional 15 cents per thousand value. So if you so that average home roughly one hundred six thousand dollars, it would mean another fifteen dollars uh, that homeowner uh, would pay in taxes. If you multiply, since it's close to one hundred thousand, if you multiply it, say times three for a three hundred thousand dollar home, you take that fifteen dollars per year, multiply it by three. So a three hundred thousand dollar homeowner would in essence see a forty five dollar increase as a result of your consideration of possible action on the proposed budget. On this budget brief, the next page uh, begins the strategic plan and an identification as to how this, this budget advances uh, the goals and action items of the strategic plan. I'd like to spend just a couple minutes going through that. If I could turn your attention to page, bottom of page 16, 
Uh, this is the first of six focus areas, quality of life, it's infrastructure, public facilities, neighborhood revitalization, uh, economic development, governing and fiscal management, and the sixth is communication. But first I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, bottom of 16 quality of life. Uh, one of the, uh, again, I'll talk quite a bit about the right hand column where it says budgeted program services or capital projects. Uh, specifically in, in this box, it talks about playground renovations as part of the 2020 budget, Moose Park playground equipment will be, uh, will be installed at a cost of $25,000. Uh, on the next page 17, uh, again in that third column, it talks about continued focus of city streets resurfacing, including Superior Avenue. Uh, this project is specifically 29th uh, Street to Taylor. Geely Avenue is also included, also proposed from Calumet to tw North 23rd, and Georgia Avenue from South 9th to South 14th. Um, next is begin design phase for smart city traffic lighting coordination. This is a 399,000 design phase with uh, during 2020 with possible installation of the actual uh, smart technology in 2021. Uh, again, this is substantially funded by federal dollars, so the local share is, is limited. Renovation of former Vandervaart site. Uh, as you have previously received a presentation, this is roughly a $47.5 million investment that the city is attempting to leverage. Uh, we will be creating a future TIP district uh, with limited public infrastructure costs are anticipated. Next is begin repairs of fire station number two, uh, 317,000 and change for a phase one of that fire station. ADA ac accessible walkways, roughly $110,000 is being Earmarked specifically for that uh, initiative. Uh, continuous sanitary sewer maintenance relining, $750,000 is proposed for this program. Uh, other wastewater treatment facility improvements are digester cover replacement, a digester heat exchanger, and roof uh, replacement of one of the digesters for a total of $750,000. Uh, Last but not least is a $750,000 project to replace the roof of Shoreline Metro's uh, main building. Again, the expectation is the federal government will pick up over half of that cost. Uh, and those are really the projects that have uh, substantial capital related action items associated with the strategic plan. With that, uh, I'd love to entertain any questions or comments that you have. Thank you, Daryl. Um, we'll open up to any questions or comments from members of the committee. Anyone have any questions for Daryl? Um, Alder Person Donahue. Um, just apropos, uh, Daryl, and I know you and I have had a chance to chat, but there were a couple of concerns raised um, at the public uh, public comment uh, tonight. Um, one uh, regarding uh, funds for the um, city band and the other um, uh, broadcasting for um, uh, school uh, athletic events. Could you just comment on, on, on how that plays out for us? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, regarding the first item, and that is the POPs band support, uh, my understanding uh, the funding for that uh, is not taxpayer driven. It's uh, being funded by a sponsorship of a local company and again, it's based upon how uh, the city allocates that sponsorship, uh, and it has gone to the POPs band, but the expectation is, uh, and we have seen a drop in the amount of alloc uh, on what is allocated for that POPs band. My understanding in 2020, there is a continued uh, allocation of some of that sponsorship funds. Uh, Chad, if you could confirm that. That yes. So the plan is for continued funding in 2020. Uh, but okay. again, for, for alders, is uh, no taxpayer funding uh, is being used to, as, as our allocation of uh, private sponsorship dollars. Uh, regarding, this, this, regarding the second matter, and that is uh, additional uh, expenditures associated with broadcast cost of public um, public athletic events, uh, as it was uh, uh, identified by uh, the gentleman earlier this evening. Uh, this was discussed uh, as part of the 2019 budget. 
Ultimately, the decision was made to reduce our full-time equivalent staffing at the cable studio from one and a half to I think 1.25 with the expectation that decrease in uh, staffing would occur July 1st, 2019 to coincide with the new school year of the Sheboygan Area School District. Uh, it was identified uh, closely after you made uh, that took that vote in uh, fall or November of 2018. It was communicated to the school district that uh, the city would no longer fund uh, the, the, the taping and broadcasting uh, specifically of those athletic uh, activities. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if the school district felt it was important that they could uh, either uh, include additional funding as part of their budget, their upcoming 2019-2020 uh, budget, or seek uh, sponsorship uh, funding themselves. Uh, ultimately, they decided that was not a priority for them. In fact, they reduced uh, their budget associated with cable-related activities. Uh, and subsequently, July 1st of this year, uh, we stopped uh, uh, programming anything uh, of an athletic uh, event nature. Uh, in the 2020 budget, as it was correctly identified, there is no funding uh, in the 2020 budget for school district-related uh, athletic events. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alder Person Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Daryl, there was an article in the Sheboygan Press either this week or last week touching on the budget. And one of the items it talked about was 712000 for neighborhood revitalization, revitalization, including new sidewalks, landscaping, and uh, ADA compliant crosswalks targeting the Riverbend area. Can you just give a little background on that project or the focus on that area? Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that. Uh, the city has the unique opportunity, uh, and maybe this opportunity will present itself uh, in the future, uh, the state legislature allows uh, communities to hold open for one additional year beyond the normal closure date. Uh, if, if the city is willing to spend uh, the additional increment uh, on uh, housing rehabilitation or neighborhood revitalization. Uh, the city in 2020, uh, we, nor we would have had a, a closure uh, for the full year of T TIF district number 11 TID number 11 is Washington Square. So if you're familiar with that area, it's on the South Side South Business Drive. Uh, the annual increment amount is $712,000. There's a slide up uh, with some of the detail. Uh, so even though uh, the city has in the upper floor rental rehab, residential facade, and landscaping grants, public improvements including ADA and sidewalks, uh, ADA crossings, uh, crosswalks and, and sidewalks uh, in some of these neighborhoods, and then staffing to administrate this program. Uh, the total for this is roughly $420,000. So the city expects that we will uh, continue to program uh, expenses associated with the uh, state legislator's intent for a couple years. So not all $712,000 will be expended uh, in calendar year 2020. Uh, uh, this is in the weeds a little bit, but the city expects probably as early as March or April to, to officially close out uh, this TIF district so that as we begin thinking and planning for the 2021 budget, we will assume that uh, this, in, this uh, new, in essence, tax base of a newly closed out TID will be available for the city to fund general operational purposes. But we're able to isolate, in essence, uh, with the establishment of this budget and the taxing uh, to coincide with the bill tax bill coming out in December that uh, we will substantially get the 712,000 and be able to close out uh, early part of 2020 as I mentioned for for general operational benefit in future years so we're excited about uh, these uh, programs uh, that were up on the slide before and, and the impact that we think uh, it will have in our community Thank you. Chad, did you have a question? I have you queued up. I didn't know if that was me. You're good, okay. No, I. Oh, okay. Just to follow up on what the administrator said in regards to the um, 
Sheboygan Pops contribution that is funded through the Visit Sheboygan budget. And as the uh, city administrator said, it's a sponsorship from, in this case, Planko, and it's shared between uh, the, the sponsorship is has uh, funded the 4th of July activities as well as the Pops concerts. Now, Visit Sheboygan has not approved their 2020 budget. There had been some talk uh, working through it to hopefully wean the contribution from the city to the Pops um, or from Visit Sheboygan to the Pops off over a number of years. That's why it went from 10000 to 8000 down to 4000 So I, you know, I don't know what the final number is going to be in 2020, uh, what that contribution is. I think there should be some money going towards them, but at what level I can't answer that at this stage. Okay, thanks, Jen. Any other discussions from council members? Seeing none, Daryl? I, just as a reminder, I know that uh, several of you on the council are relatively new. Uh, this is a fairly complicated uh, document. Um, so I I've understand if you have you know questions, I would love to sit down with you and go over uh, some, of, uh, some of the issues that may, may be a little more complicated and, and hard to understand. But uh, again, please feel welcome to uh, contact myself uh, and, and, and so we can have time to go through it prior to uh, your consideration at your first meeting in November. All right. Thanks, Daryl. You're All welcome. Right. We'll jump to uh, items for discussion and possible action. Item four on the agenda. Um, 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3, I think we'll respectively, um, as long as the council is okay with this, we'll, we'll, we'll consider these as one um, item. Is there such motion? There's been a motion and second uh, to package and approve items 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. Um, to whom was referred direct referral resolution 83, 1920 by older persons Donahue Boren, establishing the 2020 appropri budget appropriations and 2019 tax levy for during the calendar year. Any further discussion on the budget items? Approve items four. Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, accepting uh, the, the action items and sending it to the council for full approval, please state aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Oh, uh, the city clerk uh, identified that uh, the motion is to uh, accept it as amended, as long as that's okay. All right, we'll take the vote again. All those in favor, please state aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. With that, that is approved and sent to the council. Um, Seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there such motion to adjourn? Oh, uh, uh, the city clerk There's been a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting, please state aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Chair sure votes aye. We are adjourned at right, eight o'clock. Thank you, everybody.